your presence in this space is no mere coincidence. It's a meticulous and intentional connection designed to deliver the profound message of Apostle Joshua Selman directly to you. This message goes beyond being a mere source of blessings. It's a dynamic force, sparking the flame of greatness within you. Open your heart expansively and permit your mind to fully immerse in the opulence of this transformative diet. Before we venture further, I extend a sincere invitation for you to... The word go and the word go now are not the same. The word go and the word go later are not the same. So just because God tells you you are going to go left, you need to ask him now that I know where I'm going, when am I going? When am I going? Because if you miss one day, or if you exceed with one day, it can corrupt the entire process of the journey. Has God spoken to someone tonight? There are only two prayer points we are going to pray tonight within the time that we have. The prayer, first prayer is, Oh God, where I am already at the edge of making a fatal disaster over my life, I obtain grace for a U-turn this night. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Please pray from the depth of your heart. Someone is praying. Talk to the Lord. Lord, where I have missed out on your will for my life, I obtain grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone is praying where I have feared of sincerely. I thought you were the one telling me to do the business. I thought you told me to start ministry. Now I realize you are not the one. I'm not ashamed to cry. Show me mercy. Because he said his yoke is easy and his burden is light. When you are carrying what is killing you, vet and be sure that it is God's burden you are carrying. don't be tired please pray this is about your destiny hallelujah prayer point number two lord grant me the grace and the staying power that all the days of my appointed time i will wait until your voice comes to lead me destroy the spirit of impatience listen especially this our generation there is pressure to prove a point i am now a millionaire ministry is now working i now have thirty thousand members be careful for 10 years you may be pastoring 10 people those 10 people are not yet your members they are the leaders you are raising afterwards god will now bring members and you will find out that you are leading a global ministry it is this lack of understanding the will of God and the timing of God that has brought many people to rub their hands in all kinds of satanic things. You are going to pray, Lord, the grace to stay. The grace to stay in the area and the place of your will. No matter the sun, no matter the rain, the stamina to insist to see that your will comes to pass in my life. Someone pray, lift your voice and pray. Somebody pray, somebody pray from the depth of your heart. hallelujah first john 5 14 and 15 first john 5 14 and 15 please media help us first john 5 14 and 16 this will be our memory verse for tonight 
use it to pray throughout this week let's read it together and this is the confidence we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he heareth us 15 and if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask we know that we have our petitions that we desired of him your confidence is that once you are in the will of God find rest once you are in the will of God find rest for some of you you are about to quit your job right now and God is saying that job if you are can be patient three more months just when your promotion is on its way coming don't let the devil cheat you because the salary is not a reflection don't make the mistake of Hagar when they banish Hagar Hagar went away in anger when God met her he said return back to your mistress your mistress listen please use this week to pray pray in the spirit write the various aspects of your life out and say father with clarity reveal your will don't mind people who say it doesn't matter you have a brain be careful brain has landed many people in trouble it is better to be foolish and to wait when his word comes influence comes grace comes the man you are seeing today standing before you that by the privilege of god's grace you celebrate is a product of the honor that comes in standing with the will of God I pray for you in the name of Jesus the son of the living God for all of you who are asking Lord direct me let me know your counsel for the next chapter of my life receive precision of understanding of his will in Jesus name some of you he will come to you in dreams this night some in visions this night some he will give you a scripture this night some he will reveal to your spirit this night but by all means may my god reveal to you by all means may my god reveal to you number two i want to pray specially for all those who have been in the waiting room of destiny waiting on the word of the lord i want to pray for you can i tell you this hear me it does not take god anything to compress the blessings of your 20 years of your 10 years of your five years and bring it in a moment therefore i prophesy to you especially for those who have been waiting on the word of the lord in the name of jesus with his word let there be restoration with his word let there be multiplication with his word let there be increase in the name of jesus hear me for some of you as the word of god is coming in this season it will come with a grace to pursue it will come with a grace to overtake and by all means to recover all i say it again it will come with a grace to pursue it will come with a grace to overtake hear me some of you may have been burying 5 10 15 years it's not one child that will come four children at once will come to compensate for the time of waiting in the name of jesus christ joseph do not fear your compensation is already in the palace Joseph do not see your season of the prison as a waste your compensation if you insist to come out of the prison God will open the door but you will return back to Potiphar's house but if you wait for his timing you will never need to go to Potiphar's house again from the prison you are going to the throne may the grace that enthrones let that grace rest upon you may the grace that lifts let that grace rest upon you in the name of jesus christ please let me encourage you please 
I plead with every one of you watching and listening in the name of Jesus Christ the Son of the Living God listen to this message again please if you love Jesus and you honor me as your man of God go and listen to this go to Koinonia Global some of you this night go and settle down again believe me when I tell you many of you did not hear what I said go back and listen with your heart open and one factor that is responsible for your rising and your excelling your ability to represent the purposes of God you're a man of God here listen to me you're a businessman here listen to me you want God to do mighty things with you in this end time listen to me it is not just wishing that an anointing and a mantle comes upon you there is a state you must assume there is a level to which the salvation is ministered to your soul a level of dexterity and health at a solical level that is what will qualify you to receive certain precious mantles and certain precious graces are we together when you study i'm a student of revival by the grace of god i have studied revivals across continent i've studied the history of the church in nigeria with a view to finding out what went well and what went wrong i have a dear friend who wrote an article about the church in nigeria i have a book that was written i have visited a few sites where revival broke out in nigeria and i asked a few questions for the grandchildren um, great grandchildren of some of the revivalists, whether in the east, whether in the south, 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 down to Boni, people like Samuel Ajayi Crowder, Joseph Johnson. I've had the honor to touch the chair, to sit down on some of the chairs that they sat on, to stand on the pulpits that they preach. So I'm not just talking to you about cunningly devised fables. I can tell you, in my study, I have discovered that it was never the deficiency of power. It was never the deficiency of gifts. It was the deficiency of renewal and transformation. That every time the spirit of revival is about to come, God will mandate that there is a requisite level of renewal that the vessels that will be used must attain unto. But if the people are not transformed, God will have to make do with the state of the vessels as at the point that prophecy releases revival. Are we together now? And so you will find very, 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 um, very weak vessels, but they are carrying precious mandates and they do not last. Because while the revival is on, for those who their emotions have not been dominated by the word of God, things like anger, things like all of these attributes can just destroy. You read through the generals, most of these people, it was the weakness of the flesh and the human nature, the absence of transformation. Now we have a generation that wants to be victorious. We are trusting that the end time revival, that mantle will come upon us. But most of the vessels, all we are doing is just waiting and looking and saying, Lord, when will it come? And God is saying, you are about to make the mistakes that were made in the 60s and the 70s. Why do you think John the Baptist was locked up in the wilderness? Unfortunately, John the Baptist did not have any known opportunity to be mentored in scripture. The Bible does not reveal that to us. The deficiency of his transformation is what took his life. He was not Herod. He was angry. There were offense, all kinds of things there. The man who ordained Jesus, the problem was not spirit or anointing. This man was anointed of the spirit from the womb, but he was angry and offended. And he said, go and tell Jesus, are you the Messiah or should we expect another? That means you can be a great man of God carrying a prophetic grace. But because of emotional, the word of God has not dominated your emotions. Watch this. The word of God has not dominated your thoughts. You will find yourself doing foolish things in spite of the anointing on you. And now you are wondering, what in the world is wrong with me? How could you be so anointed? And then the solical realm, your emotions, haywire. You can boil like somebody who is angry and insult everybody. And then you are boiling. You are still anointed, even while you are boiling. And people look at you with fear like Elijah. And say, where is this guy coming from? Elijah was transformed. But Elijah is not the best model of who the Christian should be. Because there were many things about Elijah's life that Jesus corrected. One of it was his anger. Read your Bible. 
when Jesus came and was vetting through Elijah, it was clear. The people said, look, this man is our model. And Jesus said, no, I've come with a superior template. Elijah was anointed, but that man was angry. Moses was meek, but Moses was angry. That means the moment you want to become a great leader, among the many things you must deal with is anger. Because anger is the cancer of leaders, justifiably so. Because dealing with people is a very, you can abort destiny using justifiable anger. It says in your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. It does not come by impartation. There is a level of transformation and renewal. Hallelujah. Yes. Most believers are not able to rise because the requisite belief system, please listen to me. The requisite, do you know, there are levels of the anointing that God has brought me into today. I prayed and fasted for those levels years ago and they did not come. The problem was not my prayer. I prayed correctly. The problem was not my fasting. I fasted correctly. I tell you what went wrong. What went wrong was that as a vessel, my level of renewal and my level of transformation has not attained the state where it becomes justifiable for that level of grace to rest. Hallelujah. There are people who pray and say, Father, I'm a kingdom financier. Give me one billion. And God tests them with 10 million. The day they see it in the account, what did he give them? 10 million. And with that 10 million, they are confused. They become a risk to themselves. Because that money suddenly arrived. They make bad decisions. Listen to me. You know the level of transformation and renewal that you have in the presence of opportunities. If opportunities have not presented themselves before you, it is difficult for you to think you are renewed or transformed. Can you see good things and say no to it because it is not the will of God? Has your will submitted to God that much? An opportunity to go abroad, for instance. An opportunity to get whatever it is. An opportunity to have a good life. But God tells you this is inconsistent with my blueprint for you. Do you have the spirituality, the maturity, and the level of renewal to say yes or no? How about your emotions? What do you do when your wife gets angry and insults you? Or when your husband gets angry and insults you? Or when members get angry and insult you? Or when social media or whatever it is, the pressure to want to prove a point. Uh -huh. There is no growth and there is no maturity. Your emotions swing from left to right. People can literally program you using the deficiency of your emotions. They can make you do certain things and make you say certain things. Are we together now? And then how about the dexterity of your thoughts, the quality of your thoughts, your intellect? Do you understand the laws of the spirit? Do you understand the laws of the kingdom? Or are you hoping that I will just be successful? No, it does not work like that. What do you know about God? What do you know about Satan? What do you know about failure? What do you know about success? What do you know about spirituality? What do you know about demons? What do you know about angels? What do you know about righteousness? What do you know about the victory that is in Christ? What do you know about challenges? What do you know about relationships? These are the things that frame your understanding at a thought realm. Is someone listening to me? So you can see in truth that many of the confessions we make are will be great. I know that it's psychologically consoling, but from the lens of honesty, many people will not be great. No, they are far from it because there is no superstition around it. It is a labor in the spirit to obtain superior transformation. A CEO is not a body wearing a suit. A CEO is a mindset that has been transformed. Are we together? Perhaps in this case, the thought realm. Now, I want you to lay your hands on your head. After praying, we are going to get into a serious phase of mind transformation right now. Someone's mind is about to change. I'm about to share a few thoughts with you. Please lay your hands generously on your head and pray. Pray crying from the depth of your heart. 
As you are praying, I want you to see all the destinies that are connected to you. If you are a man of God here, see all the destinies that have been praying for your manifestation. In the name of Jesus, a new season by the power of the Holy Spirit. A man of God like never before, an end time warrior like never before, a kingdom financier like never before. Through the excellency of my renewal, the excellency of my transformation, something is about to happen to your mentality. I like you to pray, open up your spirit and decree and declare that the former me is about to leave for the new me to come. The former man of God is about to leave for a new one to come. The failure is leaving, the victor is coming. The defeated one is leaving, the victor is coming. The one who is under the yokes of demons and curses is about about to live through the excellency of my renewal. Go ahead and pray. Kaparus katebash, ebrakata pakatos katafrakata belaketos, embrakata pakata katos katafrakate, lish kabarekata parus kiata, embrakata parikatos kiata. Prophecy is about to happen in my life. Prophecy is about to happen to my life. I came to church tonight for my transformation. I came to church tonight for my rising. Finally, I'm accessing the mindset that will allow the anointing to rest upon my life. I'm accessing the mindset that will allow the blueprint of my prophetic destiny to begin to work. Pray one more minute. Oh, the failure is living, living right now, no matter how long it has been there. The defeated one is living for the victor to manifest. In Jesus' name I pray. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. One more time. Every high, Every high thing, thing must come down. Every Please sit down, fasten your seat belt, and let me give you the belief systems for victory. The mentality of a victor. Be ready to write. Number one, the first belief system that you must adopt to walk in victory. The first belief system is an understanding of your positional advantage in Christ. Please write. Let's hurry up. We have a lot to cover up and God will grant us grace. Belief system number one that turns any believer to a sign and a wonder is an understanding of your positional advantage in Christ. Knowing that Jesus died for you is not enough. You must understand the implication of his death, his burial, his resurrection. For therein lies your victory as a believer. Ephesians 4. 2 4 and 6 Ephesians 2 4 to 6 it says but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us verse 5 even when we were dead in sins had quickened us together with Christ everybody say together with Christ one more time say together with Christ for by grace are ye saved verse 6 and had raised us up together the key word is together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ. The consciousness of your positional advantage and Ephesians 1 from verse 20 to 23 tells us the implication of being in that position which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Verse 21, far above, let's list them. Number one principality number two 
power. Number three, might. Number four, dominion. And every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. 22, it says, and hath put all things under his feet. Say all things. Under his feet. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church. 23, which is his body. The church is his body. Every authority that was given to the head was also given to the body. The Bible says the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Say your positional advantage. It's a revelation and it's a consciousness that must come upon you. That although you walk in the earth. The Bible says you have been exalted. There is a seat of authority that where Jesus sat in victory, that is where you sit. Now, it's not just Pentecostal gibberish. The Bible says it and let God be true and all men liars. It is not when you are translated and you experience a great life that you believe it. It is believing it that transits you. This reality is not a physical reality. It is first a spiritual reality. At the point of believing this, nothing in your life will show like this is true. But your assignment is to believe it. I'm sharing with you my mentality. A position advantage. A far above mentality. A far above mentality far above mentality you exempt yourself from the wickedness the vicissitudes of life that you know that i am victorious regardless what happens i am victorious belief system number one is an understanding of your positional advantage in christ can we continue number two the second belief system that programs victory in the believer's life is the consciousness of your oneness with Christ the consciousness of your oneness with Christ please write it first Corinthians 6 and verse 17 NIV we read that already it says that he that is in union with Christ first Corinthians 6 17 it says that he is one spirit with him he who unites himself with the Lord is one spirit with him. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Give us amplified of Ephesians 6 and verse 10. Look at what it says. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Be empowered through your union with him. There is an implication. You are united with him. Whatever flows from him flows to you and through you to your world. You are united with him. The consciousness of your oneness. Listen, how do you stand and make declarations? These are your hands. The same hands you had as a baby. What suddenly changed in the hands that you lay it on someone and then the person gets healed? What changed? It is a consciousness. What changed the same mouth that you used to take breast milk as a baby? The same mouth that you used to eat all your life? The same mouth you used to look for trouble with? What suddenly changed that you make a declaration in the name of Jesus? Let doors be opened and people say amen and return with testimonies. What changed? The same brain that you have. That you went to class, you forgot a lot of things. Now you can stand and then be telling someone something about his life when you were not there. What changed? The consciousness of your oneness. The consciousness. The Bible says you are hidden with Christ and Christ in God. Now it's a process to get that consciousness to be crystallized. But that you are responsible for beginning that journey. You must plant that consciousness in you. Hallelujah. Is someone listening? The victor's mindset, number two. The consciousness of your oneness. Your oneness with Christ. Your oneness with Christ. Everything that answers to Jesus must answer to me. In the name of Jesus. Jesus went to every land and there was a structure for him to rise. So it will be with me. Jesus said, as I was or as I am, 
he said that so are you now so are you now as he was as he walked upon the earth he says so are you can you imagine that you watch the life of Jesus and see the dexterity, the excellence that emanated from his life. And yet many believers who claim to be one with him were not manifesting the possibilities that come with that oneness. Not because the statement is untrue, but because we have not established that consciousness. Number three. What is the third belief system for victory in the kingdom? Are you ready? Your life will eventually be an expression of your beliefs, philosophies, and ideas. Let me take it again. Your life, this is the third mindset you must have, that your life will eventually be an expression of your beliefs, your philosophies, and your ideas. Your life will eventually, ladies and gentlemen, be an expression of your beliefs, your philosophies, and your ideas. That means the quality of your life or otherwise, first from a spiritual standpoint, then spilling over to every area of your life will be a merciless reflection of your beliefs, your philosophies, and your ideas. Something about God you do not know can make you live a defeated life. Something about Satan you do not know can make you live a defeated life. Something about men you do not know can make you live a defeated life. Your life is not just dependent on your job. Your life is not just dependent on government. Your life is not just dependent on relatives or situations and circumstances. Many of us are blaming the wrong things. The real factor that controls the quality of your life Believe me, is your beliefs, your philosophies, your ideas. Is someone learning? Number four. Are you ready for the fourth belief system? Without consistent decisions and actions, comma, without consistent decisions and actions, comma, life and destiny remains stagnant without consistent decisions and actions please if you're writing underline decisions underline actions without consistent decisions and actions life and destiny remains stagnant that means your pace in life is at the mercy of the consistency of your decisions and your actions great decisions great actions and then great actualization of destiny. No decision, no action, and your destiny remains. Deuteronomy chapter 30 from verse 19 and 20. Without consistent decisions and actions, life and destiny remain stagnant. How true and powerful this is. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death. Is that in your Bible? I have said before you blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life, not wish life. Choose life that both you and thy seed may live. Verse 20. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God. This is the implication of choosing life. That thou mayest obey his voice and that thou mayest cleave unto him. For he is thy life and the length of thy days. And that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give them. Please listen to me. Ladies and gentlemen, one day ego beta is not a wise approach to life. My life and your life today is a product of your decisions. A decision is not a wish. A wish is a blind desire. A decision is an intentional wish backed up by the willingness to pay whatever price to make it happen. So there is a difference between a wish. Many people are wishing, not deciding. I wish to move from here to here. That is a wish. I decide to move from here to here means one, I have placed that desire. But together with that desire, I am willing to pay whatever price in righteousness to get there. I want the anointing. That is a wish. 
I want to know scripture. That is a wish. I want to be a great man. That is a wish. Those are not decisions. Until you include the responsibility factor in your desires, they are still wishes. And many believers, respectfully speaking, preachers, politicians, people aspiring to be great, it does not matter what kind of prophecy is on your head if you do not sustain the discipline to decide and then to act. So if I have two people here, one is wishing for a great life, I wish I will be great. In fact, I desire greatness. I desire power. I desire to be mightily used by God. Another person right from his or her lowly estate is making that decision. And then the person now takes a step further to honor that decision. There is always action that must honor your decisions for destiny to move. Are we together? I like the way this man is playing his keyboard. I like the way this man is playing his drum. That is a desire. I'm sure one day I'll become like the drummer. You are, you are just wishing. The day you decide to be a drummer, you say, I have decided. What does it take? And the easiest way is to meet those who are already in, they are living the reality of your desire. Sir, what did you do to get this? He will tell you, are you ready? Okay, there is a school. Then you submit yourself to it. Are we together? Someone says, I want power. Okay. You've been saying it from 2018, 2019. Oh, more power. 2020, more power. Someone will say, honestly, I desire power because the power is required to actualize destiny and to birth the purposes of God in the lives of people and the person goes to find out how what are the keys that control genuine power when that person becomes empowered the talkative is still there wishing there are many people who want to be rich I want to be rich <laughs> no another person will sit down and get tired and say i'm tired of stagnation and the limitations that come from it in the name of jesus the bible gives me the, all the allowance to attain unto wealth and abundance what does it take that person will get up and make a decision let me show you how destiny moves from this day i decide that i will not sleep until i spend at least one hour every day studying a book on wealth and abundance following a program that helps me that is someone who has decided Someone who wants to become a great man of God, I will, I will not rest until I spend one day at least praying for one or two hours. One hour studying videos and scripture. It may not look like all the time, but the person has started. Let me tell you the one who will become. The one who is taking action. Destiny is at the mercy of decisions and actions more than prophecy. Let me repeat. Destiny is at the mercy of decisions and actions more than prophecy. That means if nobody ever has a chance to prophesy to your life, but you can take the prophecy of scripture and believe it and make decisions out of it and act, I guarantee you no power in existence will stop you from manifesting. Versus somebody who says, Amen. And even places oil on your head and you go back and not act this charge i give unto you my son timothy that you wore a good warfare a good warfare someone met me and said one of the father of faith laid hands on me and from that day my life never became the same he was just communicating his observation i looked at him i said you are right but you need to go and see what i did with that laying on of hands don't you think that i just jumped and said oh hands have come upon me no you go back and do something with it hallelujah apostle god is prospering koinonia growing in leaps and bounds i agree but you go back and see the back end of what happens you know how much time it takes to prepare what you are hearing now the kind of research i hope you know that it's not just scripture that brings this information you are going to consult references with intelligence it takes time it's not like there is a book that has all the ideas for you you piece them together by sitting down when others are sleeping you are awake and god is honoring the actions and moving your destiny forward say in the name of jesus shout it say in the name of jesus i declare that from today i make quality decisions and i take quality actions 
there are many of you here i will build i will build i will build you said that when land was 10 million and you had 30 million in your account i will build while you were saying that somebody was in 100 level the person finished and took a step of faith he said all i have is one million i will go and meet the owner of the estate and say in the name of jesus show me favor who will experience favor of the two and he meets that man and he says you're a young man you seem to be very ambitious okay come i will help you take half plot of land and the person laughs whereas the person who does not have anything will say half plot is too small can't you build there and rent it out later on decisions many have not decided to be great many have not decided to be serious you have not decided to make your prayer life a priority do you know something about the human will the anointing of God will always move the direction of your true decisions that when you make up your mind and say from this day forward hallelujah everybody say decisions say actions i want you right now while you are watching me write three things that you will decide upon and you will take immediate action by the spirit and not stop till you see results as god puts it in your heart for some of you is building for some of you, it's your health. For some of you, it's re-engineering your entire life. For some of you, you need to put your ministry or your life in order. Please write it by the Spirit. This is why you came to church. Don't assume, I am a father, but my wife has been the one taking care of the family. It started when I lost my job in 2015. Thank you, sir. With all due respect, the Bible says any man that cannot take care of his family, that, that time is too long for you to remain in that state. Therefore, make a decision that in the name of Jesus Christ, I will rise to my responsibility as a father. I've been having a pain in my body. I said, I will go to the hospital one day. It's like the pain is increasing. You know? Something is swelling around my stomach. Um, I'm sure one day, maybe miracle service November, I will come. No. Every time you fail to decide, you give the devil a chance to destroy you. Every time you fail to decide, you give the devil a chance to destroy you. Every time you fail to decide, you give the devil a chance to destroy you. Let's hurry up. Is someone getting a new mindset? So number one mindset is an understanding of your positional advantage in Christ. Number two, your oneness with Christ. Number three, that your life will eventually be an expression of your beliefs, your philosophies, and your ideas. Number four, that without consistent decisions and actions, life and destiny remains stagnant. Are you ready for number five? Number five is a very, con is a very consoling orientation that you must have. Challenges are not unusual and can always be surmounted please write this is the fifth belief system that programs you for victory challenges are not unusual at all and can always be surmounted psalm 34 19. psalm 34 19. many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivered him out of how many Oh, look at me when you when you face challenges on your path to destiny your path to ministry your path to knowing God do not sit back and pretend as though it was something that was lack of faith there are many times challenges are proof that you are moving forward if you are not driving a car it does not enter any pothole if you are not driving a car you will never face traffic a car that is stagnant and not moving does not have any challenge am i am i to, am i talking to you yes many of you the challenges that you face on the way is proof that there is motion happening in your life and every time you face challenges rather than pretending around it hiding it and wasting time confront it headlong and be victorious over it jump that hurdle and keep moving okay you started a business and the business crashed you made a mistake and gave your money to 419ers for how long are you going to cry use the money you lost as your school fees in the school of wisdom you see the thing about the school of wisdom is the moment you graduate your school fees is given back to you no matter how much you spend listen i want you to believe what i am telling you anything that comes as a loss 
while learning convert it to your school fees in the school of wisdom there's no time now i know better now i can learn better let me reposition myself there are people today when you ask them why their lives are like that they will say 1991 i was a pastor this pastor thing you are doing we did it all something rain came and washed our church and then when that happened and robbers came and stole my car and my bible is that why till today 2023 you are not rising is that a valid excuse Whereas in that same journey, there are people when they started, they lost their father, they lost their mother, they lost their loved ones, they lost whatever it is. In the midst of it, they said, I will wear it destiny till I become. Are we together? Yes. Oh, I, I don't have money to go for the conference, but I must find a way to follow it. Thank God for internet. Please let me meet a friend and plead with him i'm on my way becoming i should have been at a conference i don't have the money can you help me with two thousand naira let me try and get you know materials from that conference and i will listen to that is the the determination listen challenges i repeat are not unusual you are not just because people don't tell you their challenges ah this man is so easy things just happen like that no sir no sir no sir no sir no sir are we together challenges are not unusual i am certain that the sermons you've embraced have been a wellspring of blessings lifting your life and igniting a profound commitment to wholeheartedly serve god we extend a heartfelt invitation for you to subscribe to our youtube channel ensuring you remain connected and never miss any upcoming videos by activating the notification bell. Your subscription transcends a mere click. It symbolizes a dedication to continual spiritual growth, enlightenment, and empowerment. Embark on this faith-filled odyssey with us, as our channel strives to become a sanctuary for both spiritual seekers and steadfast believers. We staunchly believe in the transformative prowess of God's Word, and our objective is to disseminate messages that deeply resonate with the essence of your soul. Become a part of our community, subscribe, and let the radiant light of divine wisdom, your presence is integral to this uplifting journey, and may the abundant blessings of God overflow in every facet of your life. Amen. Stay connected with us across all our social media platforms at Flaming Channel, and explore more on our website, at www.flamingchannel.com. Gratitude fills our hearts, and may God's abundant blessings continue to grace your life abundantly.